Welcome back guys. First section of working with Replo for landing pages. So we did our first hero banner and with a with an offer and a button and then we did a few um, really nice uh, social uh, proof uh, logos. And now we're gonna go straight to the third one which is the product section. This is where we actually present the product to the customer. So we'll go through how that usually works, how you connect it with Shopify and these kind of things. And as always, I'm, I'm just commentating over my own video so that it doesn't take 30 minutes to explain this to you as well. So let's get going. So we're gonna go under components and we're gonna go in and add in another uh, container, which is how we've done it so far. And now you can just name your container anything you want. You can see, I'm naming it here product section so I can remember what it is. That's a really good idea. And then when I go under components, I go under product and I just take the template of the product over. That makes it easy because it has all of the things you need inside. And then when you're inside, you actually click and let me just slow it down for you. Once you've added in the product section, like we've done here, you see, you know, random text and the title and add to cart. The next thing we want to do is configure the product template. And what I'm hovering over right here is the actual product, which then connects to Shopify store. If you connect it and install the repo add-on inside of Shopify, it will be able to connect to your store. If you have not connected it to Shopify, you will only be able to pick placeholders. But I do definitely recommend that you set it up on your store. And once you have that, it will load all your products from Shopify store and you can simply pick the product that you want to promote. When that is done, you can do a lot of cool things that, like dynamic pricing, where it will change if you change the price of the product within the store and so on. So it's very, very nice to set it up that way. But since we're just doing this for uh, practice purposes, we're gonna be picking a placeholder. So let me just continue here and pick that placeholder. We're gonna find any product we want. I'm gonna click it in there and you can see it adds an image. That's all it does. And then it adds you know, a little bit of pricing and it's all random. But if it's dynamic from your store, then it will already load the right price from the store. Now you're gonna pick the image that you wanna go with and we're gonna change that up because that's not the product we're doing in this landing page. We're gonna show the actual bundle of three products. And then we're gonna add in the image source. So you know either you can do this uh, directly from uh, Shopify. If you have connected the store, it can take the image from within Shopify. And if it's something uh, that should be static, you can literally just make it static, which is what I'm showing in here that you can add in a dynamic uh, pricing, dynamic options, and so on. So let's just uh, continue here. So now we're changing the text. I'm just gonna slow it down a little bit here uh, because this isn't the right text. And we've already talked about how we actually work with text. It's super, super simple, but we are going to just be writing up what we want to do here. And we're gonna add in the right spacing and so on. So I'm adding in the actual name of these product variants, super, super easy. You can do that yourself. Uh, and then I'm adding in the right font, which we've also been over. I'm gonna make it extra bold, so it really pops and stands out. Uh, again, it's over here on the right side under text. And then you can see over on the left side, under our container, we now have a container just for the text, and we're gonna add in the right padding once we have the right container. Uh, and this is, padding is really what you wanna use in order to adjust the border here, the border here and these different things. And that's what you use padding for. So we're just gonna set that. I'm gonna have in a background color to make it pop even more. We're gonna use some green color so that it, it highlights a healthy product. Uh, we're gonna use green to help illustrate that. And when you wanna add in a color, you can add in a, in a code or you can add it as a, yes, yeah, see here I'm using a code or you can do it manually just by going over the color wheel. Uh, the text font is going to be white now because that goes with a better contrast when we are using green as a background. And then you can adjust the width and the height here in terms of where inside of the green container you want the text to appear. So that's how you, you can do that with the spacing and the padding here. And that's what we're working on with the right side. So that just needs a little fine adjustment in order for you to get it right. And these are the little technical things that designers pay a lot of attention to. and obviously makes your page look super, super professional. So you wanna make sure you get that so it's all you know, centered in the, in the middle and, and that co goes for every container on your page as well. So we're just adjusting that now so it looks a little bit nicer. That means that the green spacing has to, it has to be a little bit bigger. And then you can do, by the way, dynamic pricing as I told you about, or you can just use a display price or you can use a static price. Um, you can do before and after. For this example, we're gonna be doing before and after. 
uh, which is going to help be helpful in order to show that it's on sale, right? So in order to do that, first, we're just going to add in a little bit of uh, text with the price. And we, since this is before and after price, uh, I will be adding in the text one more time. Um, but first, I'm just adjusting the size. So I think it looks good at this size here. And then I'm going to add in the right font, make it extra bold so it pops a little bit. And uh, we're going to be adding in the right color here. Now that we want to add in a, uh, a before and after price, we're going to take the actual price under inside of the container that we're working with now. I'm going to add that in. Uh, so I can duplicate this price like that uh, just by, you can right click or you can uh, use your normal control or command C and command B to copy in uh, the same uh, little module twice. So it's super, super easy. I'm doing that because now I'm going to take this and do it this strike through before price, which is seen all the time on landing pages. So if we just wait here, you will see me uh, now combining both into the same container. Uh, which you can see now they're both in within the same container inside of my bigger container. You see what I mean? So we have our product section, which you can see up here. Inside of here, you can have un containers like let's call them sub containers. And inside of this, I've just combined these two into one container. That means that they are both affected by a lot of the same rules, whereas before there were two different ones, right? The reason why I want to do that is because then I can go in and change how the pricing is right now it's, it's displayed under each other but i can actually change it to horizontal direction which is what you see here and then the prices will show next to each other which is awesome and then i'm just gonna uh, left align it and i'm now going to change the before price uh with a strike through element into it so it's going to be 75 instead of 67 i'm going to have strike through which you see there and i'm going to add a red color which kind of indicates this was the old price and it's not the one anymore and then I'm making it less uh, thick, kind of illustrating that in a visual hierarchy way that this was the old price and this is the new price. So you always kind of want to make it smaller or strike through or thinner in order to illustrate that they should not pay attention to that price anymore. And now the new price is here. And that's how you do that. Uh, super easy. So that was a nice little lesson on combining two things to one container so they're, so they're affected by the same things. Uh, and that makes it easier to ma manipulate and add some other things like that. Now we're doing a hover effect for add to cart button, which is always good. You always want to have a hover effect. And there are two states, the default state and hover state. And when you're in the hover state, that's when you can manipulate what happens when you hover over it. So that's what we're doing right now. And we're adding in a few color changes for the hover effect. So we'd like this one to have a brighter hover effect. Um, and you can do whatever you want, really. Um, I just think this looks really neat. And again, there's no right or wrong here, but you want to make sure you get something that looks really, really nice. Um, so that's the button here. We're just going to add in the default color as well, which is going to be right there, uh, black at the cart button. And for interaction, we have the hover effect now, so that should be good uh, as well. So that's just really important. And then, you know, on the click, it says add product to cart. So this is actually the the functionality behind what happens when you click on the button. So you want to actually go in and configure the interaction element of that button. So I, let's say that the, this tile up here was actually clickable. I could also say when you click on this, uh, it could have a hover effect. It could have a pop-up that would appear or whatever it might be. For example, you can see there are anima animations and mouse overs as well. So if you mouse over, uh, let's say an ingredient list, it could be that it shows the ingredient list by default. It shows it up as a pop-up, or it could also be an animation. But for here, we actually want a shop function, which is add to cart. And that's what happens here. And then you can literally go in and specify what SKU it is, what variant, how many, uh, the quantity, uh, and also should it go to the cart afterwards, or should it go straight to checkout? This is getting super, super popular because you're having this super fast checkout that usually goes for super high conversion rates when you configure it like that. You can see here there's many, many different options you can pick for redirect to product page, apply discount code, run JavaScript. So super nice. Uh, usually you will want to add product to cart and then you want to set it to go straight to checkout afterwards, right? Unless there are more products they should consider, that's what you want to do. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. Yeah, and then I'm just going through the same thing uh, one more time, which I've just 
just told you about and go straight to checkout is the preferred option. So now we got that and it works really well. Uh, super nice functionality on this area. Now we're gonna go to the next section. We're done with the product section. We're gonna go into component and we're gonna go into container again and we're gonna set up a new container because now we're gonna go into some product benefits which we wanna show with icons and a little bit of text. Uh, so again, we need a new container for that. Boom, super, super easy. And we're gonna call the container something uh, else so that we know what it is. And again, this could be called anything you want, but it could be images or product benefits or images with text. Again, this is such a uh, like stupid title. You could call it product benefits in this case because of what you're doing. Uh, and now I'm saying that I want images and I want text for this section. So that I just define what it is you can add inside. You can see it already added an image. And now I'm going to find my assets, which I've already uh, done. Uh, I've already uploaded them, so I have them in here. Um, and you can see that the icons are here, so I'm just going to insert them. And if you don't have the icons in there, you need to either buy icons. There are tons of websites where you can buy them. And that's what I recommend if you have no assets. Uh, let's say you want to do five benefits for buying a protein shake, right? So then you would find icons related to maybe that it's, you know, uh, high in protein, that it is... Um, um, lactose free and so other other things like that and you find fitting icons for anything online super cheap and you can just buy them then you import it into Replo and then we're back to where we are right now so that is in the first image and I'm gonna do six or seven benefits so now I need to duplicate my image that's the next step so once you want to duplicate here what you can really do is go on the component and the image and you can duplicate it. I'm also gonna add a little bit of text because I wanna explain what each benefit is. So that is also something I want to duplicate. So I'm gonna do that first before I start the duplication. And as always, we need to find the right text, uh, font, <laughs> tile, uh, sorry, um, size, and also the color. So everything looks professional. And that's what we're doing right here, center it. And now mm -hmm. I actually want to duplicate it. This is what I wanted to talk about. So you can right click that and then you can duplicate or you can use a shortcut command like what I said before, command C, command B, or control C, control V. Uh, and here you can see that we now have them both, but they look a little bit bad. So we just need to fix that really quickly. But once you have them into a container and you have styled them correctly under each other, which is what we saw here, we just changes the direction from um, horizontal to vertical and that's done now now they're ready to be copied out and you can right click your that and then look at that we're getting them all in uh, but you could also do it manually by going into copy and paste or duplicate which is control D as well so easy peasy you can actually use copy paste or duplicate is whatever you want really um, but super super easy I love that they have all these commands it makes it so much easier to work with as well now you can see we have all uh, our different benefits they say the same thing, they have the same icons. So what is left here is to write the, um, use the right icons and use the right description under it, uh, which is super easy. You go in, change image. I've already uploaded them, so I can go, go in here and add in the right images. And I'm just gonna go through every single one of them now and upload the right image. So it's super, super easy. Um, I'm just gonna skip through that because you now know how to do it. Again, with the copy paste functionality and duplicate functionality. Um, but I didn't take the time to describe everything, so it just says vegan, but obviously it could be you know dairy free here, it could be um, no chemicals, whatever. You could imagine that the benefits would be easy to add in, um, but that's just to show you that that makes a lot of sense. And by the way, the reason why we wanna use icons and not just a wall of text with benefits is because it can be easier to consume. So adding in the images and short text can be great. Uh, I'm not saying that's the only way to do it because I do like, uh, which I've explained in a previous video, to also explain with more thoughts and feelings about the state you're in, the vacation that you will be able to take or what you call it, the, um, the transformation journey when you're on the other side, like reaching your PR or getting losing 10 kilos. So sometimes this is nice for highlighting information but you also want to like spice it up with some of these things that actually go deep into the state you'll be in once you have used the product or service successfully and that can be added up closer to the add to cart um, but these are things that also help supplement that so we're almost done with this part we have the product section now we have this image section 
And that's literally how you do that, guys. Uh, there's not much more to it here. I'm just changing a bit of the spacing as well, just to make it a little bit easier uh, um, for the eyes and make it look better. You can see it's really close here. So I'm just separating it. I'm adding 10 pixels on, on a gap here. So very, very easy to do. And just a little thing that makes it look nicer. And then I'm adding a little bit of padding in the end, uh, which again, looks uh, makes it look a little bit nicer. Uh, and that's what you need in order to make it just be those landing pages that people think looks perfect, right? So I'm a little bit of padding there and that's it guys. So that was the next video. You learn how to add products in and all the functionality comes with that. You're really far in your journey to building your landing page. I know it's a bit dry, it's a lot of videos, but if you don't wanna do it yourself, you could also hire someone and show them all these videos. And based on them, they should be able to do your landing page, especially if you give him or her a really good brief on what you want, the idea, or if you use a template, which I will be giving away as well, then you'll have a much better starting point. So anyway, guys, hopefully this was useful and see you in the next one.